Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, listeners. You know, I always appreciate your time. With me is Larry Margolis. He is going to be telling us about personal RX, which is something I truly wish I had when my parents were living, and maybe even a little bit nowadays, even though I'm not on pharmaceuticals at this point. So thank you for uh, joining us, Larry. Thanks for having me. And I'm glad you're not on pharmaceuticals anymore. Ever. It's like it's a life goal. Um, That's great. So tell us about yourself, how you um, got into personal R- personal RX and what it is. And do you have a caregiving background? Uh, I don't directly have a caregiving background. I got into personal RX. Um, uh, well, I guess I do have a caregiving background. I have a, a daughter that had uh, severe uh, medical issues and uh, primarily in part from a medication error. And so I fundamentally just got the idea of doing medication better and having a better alternative for medication. As it turns out, there's some 42 million other people that take multiple medications that that need some extra help also. So what turned from a passive investment uh, in personal RX uh, became a passion and uh, a a primary uh, position for me and a primary career for me. (laughs) I'm always amazed how, one, many caregivers create a, the solution they need. Like, I needed a podcast that answered the questions I had, and back in late 2017, there was one. And she's still around, so, you know, it's still a good podcast, but it wasn't quite right for me. You know, we got people that write books and plays and all just, i just always amazed. And, you know, it's kind of the American way of doing things. It's like, you see a need... And a lot of us try to fill it. So I I always I'm always kind of proud of those moments when I hear about somebody creating something that they needed that helps the rest of us. So why don't you explain what personal RX is? I think people can kind of guess, but. Well, uh, yeah, the the name personal RX gives it away. But personal is really in our DNA. Uh, Everything that we do, we make it a personal experience. Typically, people revolve around a pharmacy. And you go pick up your medication, you wait in line, you call your doctors to get refills. Maybe your doctors comply on time, but you're doing a lot of legwork. And then when you finally get all of those medications, if you have a lot, now you got to organize them at home and hope you take them at the right time, the right way, and, and not overtake them, not drop them. So Personal Rx eases all of that. So the first thing that we really do is coordinate all of your care. Uh, so that all of your doctors know what you're taking. And all of your doc, we do that through a, a letter that we send out to their, to your doctors, we fax, and it specifically says which each doctor is re- prescribing. Uh, we think it's really important, so we reconcile all those medications. So we start with a good baseline to make sure you have the right stuff. Once we make sure you have the right stuff, now we coordinate getting it to you in easy-to-use dose packs. So those are little packs that uh, hold six, seven medications, uh, sometimes four or five medications, depending upon the time of day and when you take them. Each pack is individually marked with your name, the date, and the time of day that you should be taking the medication. And it comes in a roll and you peel it off and you wake up in the morning and you have your breakfast medication or your 8 a.m. medication. And if you look at it at noon and 8 a.m. is still there, you didn't take it. It's really kind of obvious. We're also going to remind you when to take it. So we send you an electronic text or a phone call or even have Alexa send out a message that it's time to take your morning pills. That's amazing. So is this role? So when you've taken the morning ones, if you also have evening ones, are they on? Are they next in the role? Yes. So on the roll would say 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 p.m., bedtime, uh, 9 p.m. Um, we have people that take multiple medications during the day. And so they're all done by time of day. That's amazing. And it's just like, so you, it's almost foolproof. It would be foolproof, but, you know, humans. <laughs> but we don't bring a glass of water to your house. Otherwise, we do pretty much everything else. That is amazing. I don't know why. Why? Why are more people not? Why are more pharmacies not doing this? Well, we got those stupid com- caps that are hard to get off. 
well, that's true. Coordinating all of that care is takes a little extra time. And Personal Rx provides a patient care coordinator for each one of our patients. So you're assigned your own person because like me, you, you find a need for things. And, and you know, when I, I call a bank or I call a credit card company or an airline and I have to uh, tell my story over and over again, I despise it. So here you don't have to do that. When you call here and you're a patient of ours, you don't dial a an extension. You don't have to remember who's your patient care coordinator. Your call is automatically routed to the right person who knows you. And it's the same person every month. And that makes it much more efficient for us to do our work. But it also makes for a much better experience for our patients. And that's the difference. And and most pharmacies don't have that extra level of care. Um, yeah. it's, it's most pharmacies that I call even just to check our competitors uh, don't do a very good job of answering telephones. Mm -mm. Healthcare is right. fundamental, though. It, it, you, when you call and you need help, somebody should be there to help you, a live person. Well, you shouldn't have to run the gauntlet of mazes to get the help either. Yeah, isn't that and amazing? I, ugh. That's so, a whole other podcast. That's a how whole we, other podcast, yes. How do we fix our broken healthcare system? <laughs> I'm not Look, tackling that one. <laughs> well, you can. You're actually tackling it by inviting me to join you today. And I think, um, you know, digit, digitalization of healthcare and how to use technology, hopefully in the background. Technology doesn't have to be in the foreground. If we have applications on, on your phone, if you want to use it, most of our patients choose not to. But technology is used in every step of the process. It's even used, as I said, when you pick up the phone and you call, you get your patient care coordinator. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything else. And that's technology the way it really ought to work when people are need a little extra time. So I think you're tackling uh, just by, by this conversation and this chat, I think you're starting to take it apart piece by piece. And I think it's really important that people understand that Technology doesn't have to be invasive. It can be complementary to good care and and I think foundational to good care. Well, we have to do something because the current system is not working for anybody, including medical care providers. Nobody seems to be happy with it, but nobody seems to be willing to bite the bullet and make a big change. So these incremental changes are at least a step, hopefully in the right direction, and personal Rx definitely sounds like a step in the right direction. So you said uh, many of your patients don't use the app. So I'm assuming demographically they're older. So they're the tech klutzes, not the tech natives <laughs> of the generation younger than me. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd like to, uh, yeah, I'd like, I can think of a few people while you're saying it that way, but yes, that are a little bit older that don't want to be bothered with it. Um, it. Be assured that we're using it here. Uh, we also have built caregiver apps. And I think this is really important for your audience as well, because it's very hard to care for your medication and care for a patient at the same time and be a patient at the same time in all likelihood. Um, and what we do is organize that so that there's an app and whether you have a an aide that comes to the house, they have access to your medication, not your personal information and your financial information, uh, but they have access to your med list. They really need to know that uh, in case there's an issue and the emergent uh, the EMTs come. Uh, and then you need a you need a quick uh, list of your medications. Everything is color coordinated and picture coded so that uh, a green pill on your app or your side of your box, the label matches the green pill in your packet. So everybody knows it's the same medication. And as far as a caregiver goes, who's not at the home, uh, who's taking care of your bills, think about an adult child that's taking care of their mom or their dad and helping them out with their medication or their spouse, they can have full control and full access. And we call that a primary caregiver. So we have different levels of service that's really simple in the app, but it's a way that they can coordinate things. A primary caregiver, as an example, gets um, gets all the messaging. When we send a box out and you're getting a shipment or you get your mid-cycle call from your representative, um, that's going to go to the primary caregiver. We're not even going to bother the older adult or, or somebody who may have, or younger for that matter, but a younger child, but somebody who has uh, a need for somebody to help them. And I would assume in that scenario, like I know caregivers 
that call a parent to make sure they've taken their morning meds and their evening meds. And, you know, that's, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but after a while, every single day of having to make, you know, two or three phone calls every day just to make sure they've taken their medications, you know, it's just, it's like you're never allowed to be off duty. At least you're that's not. how I would feel. And I never not called right. my dad. And my dad, I think we talked about this in our planning chat. He was on like 26 different meds. I couldn't keep track of those. And so many of them were white. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something about that. You okay. know, one of, the, one of the very first things we do here, we, we have a training team here. And the first thing we do for all of our new employees, I don't care what position, we just brought in a VP of operations. He got the same training as everybody else and starts with, where's the coffee machine? Meet everybody. But the next thing that it does before the training gets formalized is to sit down with a basket of pill bottles. And with a list of breakfast meds and say, show me which medications this patient takes for breakfast. And you, and all of a sudden it resonates and becomes so obvious as to what we're doing here. So we do that. And, I, and we're not the only ones to do that. I think there are some medical schools that I've heard that do that and some nursing schools. But I think it's really important. And it looks at it from the patient point of view. How do you organize that stuff for somebody? And yeah. that goes into the empathy and and dealing with how, and and focusing on how we take care of patients. It's really important, and these packets really solve uh, an enormous issue for people, particularly somebody taking twenty six minutes a day. Yeah. And we have people with many more than that. Oof. Um, yeah, many, many, many more than that. So when he came, he might have spent a month in the hospital, and he was home. About two and a half, three weeks before he ended up on hospice. But when he came out of the hospital, there were, here's the meds he's taking, stop these, change these, and add these. Now, my sister has an MBA. Um, I have started and run different businesses throughout my life. My husband is a, he was in banking for 20 years. He's a real estate broker. So between the three of us, you know, we got, we got plenty of brains, you know, no stupid, stupid people in that group. And... It was so stressful trying to figure out, like, are we doing this right? What if we make a mistake? Are we going to kill him? I mean, yep. it was just like, eh. And so, yeah. yeah, and I think I think the preponderance of his medications were white. You know, so you had, like, we were literally Googling which ones were which. And that's, the bottles tell you what to do, but then they don't. Oh, my God. It, was it just gets so confusing. Cool. because and, and not only that, but the doctor writes a prescription and prescribes it, uh, take one pill twice a day. Okay. What's twice a day? What time is that? Well, Fair. in a pharmacy world, twice a day is usually nine at five. But a bottle in a typical prescription will only say take one pill twice a day. So we assign it to an actual pack so you can't make that mistake. Well, see, I would assume twice a day would be like seven and seven. So breakfast and dinner, you know, it's 12 hours apart. Seems logical to me. <laughs> and everybody takes it takes at different times and when your breakfast pack is. But you're right. It seems logical. Uh, but people do make that mistake. Sometimes people twice a day could mean noon and dinner. They don't like to take it at dinner. They take it at bedtime. Whatever it is, the do there's a reason why a doctor writes, a prescriber writes a prescription the way they do, and it should be taken on time. And so just making that easier is is helpful. Having Alexa say it's time to take your breakfast medication is really pretty easy. Yeah. You hope. This, yeah. <laughs> I, we're an all Apple household, so we don't have an Alexa. We have a lot of Google smart devices things, and we keep semi-threatening to buy, I don't know, whatever the Google Home thing is. I guess it's called Google Home. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, but then Apple's, th Apple's threatening to make their Apple HomePod thing better, so we just haven't done any of those. So yep. it's, I have never experienced using an Alexa. So I must be one of those weird people out there. No, nope, not at all. But we have Alexa for people like yourself. We can make a phone call and the phone will ring. Time to take with this personal RX. Good morning. Time to take your breakfast medication or we'll send you a text either way. Do you have um, an idea of how many people get calls versus texts or versus Alexa? Not a whole lot of people like Alexa, which is mm. surprising to me. I thought it was pretty cool myself when we built it. Um, a lot of people like text, you know, I think, I think it has to do with, again, technology in the background. Somebody has to actually go set the Alexa up 
And if somebody's an older adult, they may, and they're not so technically inclined, they may not want to set it up. So a text is simple. They just have it on their phone and their phone's with them. I would think it'd be a little weird to have this random voice say, it's time to take your breakfast medicine. <laughs> It's time to take your evening medicine. I mean, all yeah. of a sudden it'd be like, ah, what the heck? Okay. Exactly. That, that would be my guess. And like, since we have never had one of those, those kind of devices, I don't know. Um, every so often our simply safe alarm will talk at us. It's very strange. I think it happened yesterday. I That's knew my right. husband wasn't at home, but I was hearing a voice that sounded like him and my office is downstairs. So it was like, what the heck? You know, so... <laughs> It is a little oh. strange when something randomly starts talking to you. It's like, hello, wait a minute. I know I'm alone, except for me and the dog. Yeah, so that well, might... look, technology is really revolutionizing everything. We've come a long way from that little button that says I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and so there's a lot of good stuff out there that can help people. At the same time, we're collecting data that we think we can use to benefit and scale for more patients. And And I think your question is what percentage use which versus which. That data, as we go along, I think it's going to be very valuable for us to create more tools and for healthcare in general to create more effective tools. That makes sense. And by sense. the way, I, I got to get a plug in there. All of this that we do at Personal RX is without any additional cost. So mm -hmm. your normal copay, you deserve a better, you deserve more from your copay. And that's what we do. We give you a better service. I can't argue with that. That might be the title of the episode. You deserve more from your copay. <laughs> you do. You do. You're already paying it. You might as well get better service. That is true. Yeah, I love I love it when you don't feel good and the doctor prescribes something um and you gotta go sit in the pharmacy and wait for him, even though they'll text you to say it's there. You have to check in and then go sit in the wherever away from the other sickies. To, you I was know. just gonna say that, yeah. Um, you know, you feel like crud and you don't want to be around anybody. And of course, I'm not sure. I know it's ending, but um, at our, we have to go to the, we have like a huge medical complex, which is under reconstruction. Yay. Going to the doctor is even more fun now. <laughs> the, gar <laughs> the garage is being expanded. The hospital area is being expanded. So it's like, it was a nightmare before. Now I can't imagine. But, you know, you just, you don't want to be bothered. And yet you have to go and sit there and. Try not to be too grumpy. <laughs> Try not to be rude and obnoxious. But you still have to wear a mask. So you're like, you, your nose is dripping. and you, it's, like, oh. it's fun, right? I'll be very happy when you have a respiratory issue and they don't immediately jump to, have you had a COVID test? Yes. It was decidedly negative. Again. Could we skip this, please? <laughs> like, I work from home. I hear you. I'll, and it's like, it's like. In December, I wondered if I had the variant because I'm like, this is really, I haven't been sick in a long time. I haven't been really around people. I kept looking it up and I'm like, yeah, there's like 10 symptoms and I think I might have like two and a half. So no. And then when I finally called the doctor, that was the question. Like, have you taken a recent COVID test? I'm like, Jesus, no, I will go do that. <laughs> so I did. I did. I've done four COVID tests, always negative. So I'm like, okay, can we just stop now? Apparently I'm never getting COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're and lucky. I was in D.C. in March. Yeah, and when I got, go? that was awesome. That's Wore great. myself out, but man, I had a great time. And we got to talk great to city. the legislative staffers for our representatives where I live. Um, so that was, you know, that's always a unique experience. Um, you know, we won't know how successful we are for a while, but you know, can't won't. We won't be successful if we don't try. So for people who don't know what I was doing, I was in D.C. lobbying our Congress people um, and the senators to my part was to reverse the uh, Center for Medicare Services decision to not cover any of the Alzheimer's treatment medications that are available or any of the ones in the pipeline. So I don't understand how you can say, yeah, we're not going to cover that stuff we have no data about. It might be the perfect drug. Not that that's likely, but you never know. <laughs> never know. Um, and see, then you could dispense it maybe, although these are um, infused. So if they get it into pill form, that'll be up to you. But yeah, but I, uh, the cherry blossoms came out. Everything was great. But when I got Perfect. home, I got one of those lovely push notifications that said, uh, you may have been exposed to COVID. And I'm like, oh, look, it was in the days I was in the Capitol. How, how prophetic. 
And then it expanded to a couple extra days, and I'm like, oh, lovely. So now, what is it, airplane? But nothing. So I don't know. At some point. You have a strong be, immune system. I guess so. I try. Try really hard. Apparently working out in the cold garage is bad. I wouldn't have had any, That's quote, true. illness if I wasn't, you know, out there. You know, I was always amazed you could work out at a 47-degree garage and still sweat. But apparently that was too much for my system. So. You know, you have to make adjustments. So you said um, all of this is technology based. So is this technology like, was it expensive to get started? This is my entrepreneur brain asking now, not the caregiver brain. Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Plus to doing business, but yes, uh, healthcare is the kind of thing that you just can't add a, uh, it's, it's not like a Google or a Facebook or a growing company where you can just add another couple of servers to make things work. So in healthcare, we got to do it first and we have to build scale before they come. And mm-hmm. uh, as the movie went and build it and they will come and they are coming. And and was it expensive? Yes, it was expensive, both in terms of cost and in terms of experience in building it. But clearly well worth it, clearly well worth it and appreciated and um, frankly runs our entire operation. It's just amazing. I'm like, I'm just always amazed at, you know, so I graduated from high school in 1984. I had a at least a semester, if not a year of, uh, you know, basic computer programming. (laughs) And we had the Commodore PET cassette tape drive computers. Mm -hmm. I had a radio shack. Oh, good God. Those were, (laughs) we could talk all day, but I remember those. And I think we got our first Apple computer in 1982. When I say we're an all Apple household, I am not kidding. But, you know, so I, when I think of technology, I go back to what it was way back in the beginning. And my husband grew up in Sunnyvale, like a mile from Apple's headquarters. And Steve Jobs was actually one of the um, advisors to their computer club. So he How had cool a little, little, yeah, a little, little brush with fame or infamy, maybe. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's just, it just blows my mind how in my adult lifespan so far, where technology is gone. I mean, now we've got all this AI stuff, which is interesting and slightly scary. More interesting than scary for me. It's going to happen, so why as well figure out how to embrace it, right? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really good, particularly for us, because I think it's going to help our med recs quite a bit. I think we can adopt a lot of that technology to our reconciliation process so that we can do a better job at it and perhaps faster. So right now it's a manual process. We upload everything into our website. We send it up to this big giant system in the cloud and it comes back and interprets severity and things like that of each interaction. Uh, But I think AI will head that off. I think it's also gonna head it off a little bit before it even gets to the pharmacy when the doctors are prescribing. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm not looking forward to um, uh, the world that, that, you can pre. I saw an article the other day where the AI was just creating artwork 
Um, and the artwork was just everybody was copying everybody else's own artwork and and uh, and it was pretty accurate with feeling and emotion that I'm not so particularly excited about. But I think there's a lot of good application for it. Yeah, I saw a video or was it just audio? I think it was a video of. I don't remember which president it was, Biden or it's one of the more current ones. Totally looked legit, but you knew like, you know, if you're not diving down into the weird, weird rabbit holes of the Internet, you're like, that doesn't really sound like something he would say, even though I'm watching him say it. And then there was a gentleman that recorded. He put in he basically made an AI video of him giving um, a talk that he gives all the time. And then he uploaded the actual, actually him doing the talk. Right. And when I saw the first video, and I think because I knew it was AI, and they they were like, this is really scary at how accurate this looks. So I was looking at it through that lens. And being a photographer, I was like, this looks really good. He had a mustache. I'm like, that guy's mouth is moving way too much. That mustache was just like hopping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like... The, that doesn't quite look right. And then I think he was blinking more than most people do. And then when you watch the his actual video of him in the flesh, I guess not AI flesh or whatever you want to call it, was um, that, yeah, the mustache wasn't moving as much and he wasn't blinking as much. I'm like, OK, well, I spotted the fakes, but, you know, a couple years from now, I think they might have fixed. They might fix that. So I think they may. Yeah, it might, it might not even be a couple years. So that's. Crazy. So where can people uh, learn about personal RX? Now, I know you have to have more like my husband's on one or two meds, so we don't qualify because we're he not. He doesn't need us. <laughs> he doesn't, that's yeah, a good that's thing. true. That's yes, it a is. Great thing. I mean, uh, I'm so excited about how easy you make it. It's kind of almost a bummer that I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all getting older, so maybe you'll need us down the road. Hopefully not, though. Um, people can find us at personalrx.com. That's easy. And, uh, easy enough. And uh, fill out a form and we'll have somebody call you back. It forms your name and phone number and we'll call you back immediately. Or you can call the 800 number that's on there and uh, we'll, we'll take really good care of you. The, the, the key is uh, the experience. And when it starts with a patient care representative that picks up the phone and will guide you through the process, our onboarding team, who's just amazing to get you on board and get your meds synced up and get them on time. And then, of course, onto our fulfillment team that, that consists of your patient care coordinator. It sounds like a lot, but it's a very organized process to make it. It's, it's completely transparent for our patients and caregivers, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's the right way to go and it's very effective. So we're happy to help people. Um, I think with people with Alzheimer's, um, just some personal experience in, in, in my wife's family going through uh, some early Alzheimer's at this point, uh, anything to make a caregiver's job easier, a caregiver has probably one of the most difficult jobs out there. And you know yep. that from yep. our initial conversation, you told me some things and and uh, and your podcast. And you know, they need to spend more time and just focusing on the patient and focusing on the patient needs. They shouldn't be worried about medications. If the person needs to take a fish oil or a supplement, it should be right in the pack with their meds. They shouldn't have to have extra bottles around. They shouldn't have to worry about anything else. They should just be able to take good care of that patient. So just not, that, not having to sit at the pharmacy and wait, or I think my husband gets his... Oh, it's a blood thinner. He, I think he gets that shipped to him. Pretty sure he does. Probably Mostly does, because yeah. the doctor medical complex is a 45-minute drive. And you wait 5, 10, 15 minutes to get your meds, and then you drive. That's like half a day, or, you know, that's a chunk of time. And There's even no if, need. yeah, and even if we just go to the CVS, which is like two miles away, you still got to wait. You know, you got to get yep. in the car, you got to go, or you got to make it a point to go when you're already out. And it's just, it's like... It's just one more thing you got to worry about or make, you know, not worry so much as just keep in the keep in your mind so that you pick up the meds, you know, and then you got to get it to either home or to your care, you know, whoever you're caring for. And it just takes some of that worry and some of that 
if take a few things off the to-do list, it just lessens the load for caregivers. So I'm really yeah. excited. Like I said, it's almost oh, nice. a bummer I can't use you guys. <laughs> well, let me let me expand on what you were just saying a little bit. You're you're talking about the experience of going to a CVS two miles away um, to pick up this medication. But now let's analyze this a little bit further. You've now you're now taking 12 medications or 10 medications. And you went to the doctor last week and the doctor said, I want you, I don't want you to take the green one anymore. I want you to now take the blue one. And with us, we'll handle that change for you. Uh, but in the real world, in the in the outside, the regular pharmacy world, what you're going to do is you're going to go to that pharmacy and you're going to pick up the green pill and you're going to bring it home. And now you got 30 green pills. And but you still have you only have 12 of the white pills, 12 of the beige pills, everything's out of sync. Right. So now you're constantly going to that CVS. So it's not a two mile ride and a wait once a month. You're there every week and you're waiting every week and you're potentially picking up a cold. And then you have to say, well, if I don't go to CVS and I go two hours away for this particular med, who's syncing them up and making sure that there's no conflicts in the med? And then once I do get them home and I had the prescriptions there, my doctor called them in. They're there. I picked them up. No problem. It only took a half hour each visit. Now I get them home. Now I have to, what do I do with them? I have to put them in the little pill box. And when I put them in the little pill box, I probably drop one here or there. Normal, right? Even mm -hmm. the, the most dexterity that we have, we're going to drop a pill every now and then. I, I contend that if you look behind dressers in people's bedrooms, you're going to see stacks of pills, <laughs> right? And and I could just visualize that. And so Getting rid of all of those things, not only does it save you time and make it easier, but it's a lot more accurate. And and again, there's no charge. So why not? Why not have that extra hand? Definitely. Caregivers always need an extra hand. Agreed. And Top I would job. assume that you would, one of the biggest challenges is stop taking this, now take this one. Now you've got leftovers and you can't just toss medicines in the waste basket or the toilet you got to you know take them to a specific medication disposal place you should people don't but you should it's because it's a pain in the butt that's exactly right i mean to me every pharmacy should be like a, one of those places i don't know why they're not that makes more sense to me it, yeah i agree with you they should and it's not expensive for a pharmacy to have a box there for you to put your meds in and, and so on but you know think about it this way when you get a 90-day supply and you're getting a 90-day supply, and you just get your 90-day supply last week, and you have 83 days left, give or take, and you go to the doctor, and he says, I don't want this. He says, don't take that one anymore. Okay, now you have 83 days worth of meds. So there's a few issues with that. When you have people with dementia, and you have people that, that, that make mistakes uh, without dementia, they there's a likelihood that they take that pill and think it's aspirin or something and take a few mm. of them and they shouldn't be taking that extra pill. So with us, when we're syncing up medication, if your doctor says that you need to take this new white pill and there's eight days left in your 30 day cycle, we're going to ship you eight days and your next set of packs that come will have this medication already put in. So this That's way so nice. you stay, we <laughs> sink it, and you don't have this extra medication all over the place. And frankly, on a 90-day supply to have 83 days that you have to throw out is a waste of money. Yeah, that, that hurts my little frugal heart. In my old hometown, you had to take the, let's see, one, my parents' hometown, you had to take the, dis, the, you know, the discard medications to the police department, which was sure. not pretty much in route, wasn't far away, but... It wasn't in the path of normal driving. Um, in my old hometown, I think we actually had to take it to our county supervisor's office. Hmm. Like, that was weird. That's At least an she obvious had it. one, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we only had to pass three CVSs and a Walgreens to get there or whatever. But yeah. um, And then here, so I live an hour north of Sacramento, an hour south of Tahoe. Um, we have to actually take it. This is going to sound weird. So we have a a dump and you can take everything. So they do the e-waste and the cardboard. And so everything goes there, which is nice because then you can get all your Amazon boxes and all your other crap and the discard medicines and it all goes to one place. But again, it's not necessarily in the path. It kind of is. 
but you just have to remember to do it. So you're already at the pharmacy. Here, doctor said not to take these anymore. Deal with them. That's my Yeah, opinion. well, you know, and wouldn't shouldn't a caregiver have or doesn't a caregiver have better things to do with their time? Yeah, definitely. You know, we're just it's it's just one more stress, even though it's not really that big a deal. It's not life or death, but it's just one of those things that you put on the to-do list and you keep shuffling it around until you finally do it or you finally give up and throw them in the wastebasket, which you're not supposed to do. Correct. So, so you're solving other problems as well. That's well, awesome. We try. But you know what? <laughs> think about just the cost of it. You're throwing away all that medication. You think about the cost of the healthcare system and how fragmented it is and, and, and in some ways how chaotic it is. And it can be, there's so many things that could, that could make it better. Well, and it, like we were saying before, in this simple, small little way, you just don't have this extra medication around that could be problematic if people take it and costly. Save Definitely. money. Well, I like that. Make it easy. Save money. Get more for your, your copay. What's not to like? That's my favorite. Get more <laughs> for your copay. You're already paying it. You know? Uh the health so. system we're at, they have their own pharmacy. So I'd have to change healthcare companies, which wouldn't hurt my feelings, um, to be able to utilize you guys. But then I'd also need to be on pharmaceuticals. So. Exactly. <laughs> A little so you're hurdle there right for me. Where, you're better off right where we are, right where you are, I should say. That's kind of my goal, dealing with my dad's medications. And one of the things I ended up having to do um, closer to the end of his life is, you know, he'd say, can you go to this CVS and pick up this stuff? Then I'd have to go to a second one to pick up some other ones because the first one, I got to go to two pharmacies for one guy's prescription. That made me insane. Absolutely. So I'm sure that's not uncommon or you go and they don't have what you need. And ugh, it's like. <laughs> you get to wait online all over again, right? Yeah. So much fun. And you get if you know, if you're caring for somebody in the later stages of the disease and maybe they have other comorbidities, then it's not just easy to just leave the house. You might have to bring them with right. you. Like, so, yeah, no. Definitely more more of you for more people, please. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. We try very hard every day. We have a happy team. You know, I, I talk about that, too. I think that's a big deal for a caregiver. I think it's a big deal for patients. Uh, you got to deal with people who are happy. In fact, we, we interviewed somebody yesterday. We're constantly adding people. And um, uh, we we told the agency that, 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 recommended this person wrong personality for us capable not happy can't work here so yeah, it doesn't mean we're enough. not happy all the time we're happy all the time but it, it, when people are struggling and they're taking a lot of medications and they're going through a lot uh even just a caregiver going through a lot for their job or for their parent you need a higher level of uh compassion and empathy yep I know a caregiver who basically says, you know, this, she dealt with uh, non-emergency paramedics for her mom. Her mom was on hospice, is no longer on hospice. Um, she has some, she had an, an issue she's had before. The daughter knows pretty much, this is pretty much what I think is the problem. Make, basically called paramedics to take her vitals to make sure she didn't have anything obstructing her airway. And they were very irritated that they wouldn't let her take the mom to the hospital, which is not where her mom needs to be. And she's like, just the lack of compassion for that scenario, just she was ticked off for an entire day. And I totally get it. I mean, it's, you know, they, she, they treated her rudely. And the same thing kind of at the pharmacy. It's like, yes, you have to deal with probably 100 plus people a day. This is the only time, this is my only time with dealing with you. And exactly. this is about my mother. So, yeah, the, that, that compassion and the, you know, knowing that you're being a help is is crucial because dealing with grumpy pharmacists is no fun. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are grumpy. We try not to help hire them, but some of them are grumpy. And uh, and, and, you know, on a uh, and dealing with grumpy patients, too, when they're not feeling well, they're entitled to be grumpy. And and it's that's not easy also. So it's it's nice to be able to look, it's it's nice to be full circle, build a business that helps people that you can be passionate about. And that's really a good thing. It's a win for everybody. It really is. Well, let's leave it with that. If you guys are interested in learning more, <clears throat> excuse me, 
You can go to personalrx.com, sign up, learn more. Doesn't cost you more, so what not what what's not to try? So I really nice. appreciate Larry, you know, getting in touch with me to tell me all about Personal RX. Ugh, the tongue is not working anymore. <laughs> um, and if I ever, uh, you know, well, you have to have five prescriptions, correct? You can call us with four. So. Okay. Well, if I get up to four from zero. <laughs> Hopefully not, but if you need it. And that includes supplements and, and uh, vitamins as well. So is it so i'm on a bunch of supplements give us a call we'll see if we can package them for you we typically okay. don't do that but give us a call we'll certainly work through it okay well i might i might have the hubby go through all the stuff between the two of us and see if it works out but he's Sounds pretty like good at plan. keeping it organized and you know so i don't and have if to you make a mistake on a vitamin it's not the end of the world no and the other day i picked cuz i don't know which person why why would you buy the same color you know pill pill the pill bottle or containers the week so his and mine are the same color and probably 95 percent of what we take is the same and i looked at it and i'm like what's this one and he's like that's not your box that's mine i'm like oh it's a good thing i asked you about this <laughs> we actually have something i can't disclose it now but we actually have a remedy coming out for that uh in our new packaging it'll be ready in about four weeks or so uh that deals with that exact same issue so we'll fix that too. Yeah, I'm about to take a Sharpie to the ends. They're both green. And so I would just change the color on one of them would help a lot. <laughs> That's exactly right. There's there's some interesting things that we're doing, some fun stuff that we're doing to make it fun. Awesome. Well, that'll probably already have happened by the time this comes out. And I very much appreciate this because I love hearing ways to make life a little bit easier for everybody, but definitely for caregivers. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to taking... Very good care of your audience. Thank you. Have a nice day. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.